really bothers me about religion and the so-called mainstream Christian belief or the orthodox Christian belief. Because you know what? What I'm going to say to you right now, if you do not believe in that thing, then you are a heretic. What they believe is, Mary gave birth to God. Now, if you do not believe this, you are a heretic. So, at least Christianity, because of uh, the well, Reformation and the Protestants and all these things, you know, a lot more d denominations started. So we could now s start to choose what we believe in and what we don't believe in. But if you, in the early stages of the church, did not believe that Mary was the mother of God, then you, was a, then you were a heretic. Once more, it's very important for us to understand that orthodoxy is not that which is dictated by a central person or a specific group. Orthodoxy is simply that which is deduced from the scriptures itself. But when we look at the accusation that there's a frustration because you are deemed a heretic, because you are not in good state with what the church globally believes, that is just false. Because as we know, even the Reformation itself spelled out uh, specifically uh, that which was deduced from the biblical text. Uh, and that's why I always say, whenever we get to a specific teaching or a specific group of people, it is always important for us to understand what they hold dear to as their final authority and how they see the person and work of Jesus Christ in its sufficiency and finality. But let's look at who said and who mentioned that this group is heretical. What is your reaction or bewerings that you cult of a sect is? I can't work. Wanneer ek die definitie op die internet kyk van wat een kult en een sekte is, dan moet ik maar saams denk. Ons geloof definitief niet in die onbijbelse oorleveringe en tradities wat maar niet algemeen aanvaar word, maar niet bewys kan word uit die Bijbel, die Brews of die Grieks nie. Allow for me to give you a, again, a, just a definition of what we mean when we speak of cults. You know, Dave Brees in his little booklet, Know the Marks of a Cult, gives this following definition when it speaks of a cult or a heresy. He says the following, A cult is a religious perversion. It is a belief and practice in the world of religion which calls for devotion to a religious view or leader centered in false doctrine. It is an organized heresy. A cult may take many forms, but it's basically a religious movement which distorts or warps orthodox faith to the point where truths become uh, perverted into a lie. A cult is impossible to define except against the absolute standard of the teaching of Holy Scripture. Yes, when we actually look at the teaching of Mary becoming the mother of God, we understand quite clearly that uh, ultimately Roman Catholics believe that Mary was the mother of God. And as far as I can recall, uh, uh, Pope John Paul II in uh, the 4th of December 1996 already mentioned in his La Ose Vortare Rom Ro Romano, he mentions that Mary should be venerated as the mother of God. But we can trace this back quite clearly to the Council of Ephesus in uh, 431 uh, after Christ, where uh, the Greek term Theotikos was actually attributed to Mary uh, as being the God-bearer. Uh, but let me say this. Christians believe that Jesus had a true birth, that, Jerry, that, that Mary uh, brought forth uh, the Messiah and Jesus, but Scripture is our final authority as to as to how we should esteem Mary. And nowhere does it tell us to venerate Mary, or to pray to her, or, or to keep her in high esteem. So yes, but let me uh, just answer Matthias's question because I think this is just so good for us to look at. When we look at Luke and when we look at the Bible, we can see quite clearly that. When the angel Gabriel appears to Mary in Luke chapter 1, he says the following when he speaks to her. He says to her in verse 28, he says, The Lord is with you. And then he speaks to her, he says, But do not be afraid, uh, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called, be called the Son of the Most High God. And the Lord God will give him, and listen to this, an earthly throne, the throne of his father David, which he would reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. This cult believes that there's a new king. There's a new king that is reigning upon the earth to uh, actively manifest or to be the example of this active uh, manifest sons of God. But yet it says quite clearly that Jesus 
is still the ruler and the example for us on earth. And listen to this then, verse 35, it says the Holy Spirit will come upon him and the power of the Most High will overshadow him. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And then it says the following of verse 37, after she asked, how can this be? He says, for nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Then, you know, in Zechariah's prophecy, when it speaks of John the Baptist and you will see now in this next part, here we're going to Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, where he speaks about John the Baptist. I just want to show something before we go into that slip. In verse 76, it says about the son that will come forth, John. It says, and the child you will, and, and child, you will be called the prophet of the most high God, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Who is the one that goes before the Lord? The one that goes before the Lord absolutely is John the Baptist. And you can go have a look at that. But here's the thing. Listen to what Mark says. Mark quotes directly from the, the book of Isaiah. And he says the following. And let's start from verse 1 in chapter 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Same affirmation. He's the Messiah. As it's written by Isaiah the prophet. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. will prepare your way. That is John the Baptist. A voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Now, who is preparing the way of the Lord? John. Who is the Lord? Yahweh. You can go have a read in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 and 5 and also verse 8 to 10. Jesus is in actual fact Yahweh that is revealed according to the scriptures and according to John. And then we can see in Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, there's also the prediction made that the forerunner will make the way for Ha'adon, for Yahweh himself. So Matthias, when we speak about where we get this idea of God coming to earth, of God being incarnated, it's a securely biblical idea. It's not something we thumbs up. It's not something we've deduced from a council. It is not something we've received even from an individual or a specific teaching. But we can see quite clearly that Jesus Christ in his fullness is the first expression of God's will on earth, but also God in himself.